It was indeed a great game of rugby, great crowd, great atmosphere, big time players stepping up in big moments, and big moments, JK. I've just drawn made your own graphic. I've made a graphic for everybody. If you just beam on into that, <laughs> look at that, baby. Well, I, wouldn't, I won't that? have you on the Pictionary team for a starter, but That's explain your graphic, please. Fingers. Look at that. Bryce Heem knee was on the ground. It was on the ground. That's the rule. And this is what you're talking about here. Totally. I don't think there's any need for that, was there, JK? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, oh. Here we go. Let's see. His knee is down there. There it is. Knee down. Well, I don't oh. know, you might be able to fit a couple of plates under that, actually. <laughs> See? So there was actually, the thing I loved about the game, um, Mills, was there was a lot of controversy. Yeah. It was one of those games that had everything for me. Um, you know, the Blues will go away, actually, with a bit of confidence out of it, believe it or not, because they probably should have won. I mean, Gus, I think there was a try that the Chiefs scored, or was it the Hurricanes, I can't really remember. So I thought when a, when a ball gets knocked out, and you've force it down like Hoskins so tutu as a try. There must be some interpretation of the rule because it was the Chiefs game. I think there was a like a clear strip motion, whereas maybe if you're looking at Hoskins going down, there's a, a bit of a punching motion, but you know, maybe that's you need to go into the finer details of that. It feels like though that all of those moments, some controversial ones and all of that, they actually added yeah. to the occasion rather than taking away from it, Mills. Oh, it's an outstanding game. No, don't get, don't get us wrong. I mean, even when you say it's the Nurofen sort of moment, a lot of those guys would have been lining up at Chemist Warehouse yeah. this morning because, man, there was a lot of bruised bodies. But what I love the best about it is the big time players stepped up. You know, they stepped up, and those are the guys when you want and sort of. Um, those tight games, um, when, you, when you turn a ball over, then they make you pay. There's no sort of waiting another two or three sort of rucks. And um, whenever there's a slight opportunity, guys, and particularly the All Blacks, really stood up and made other teams punish and made really big decisions. But it was an outstanding performance from, from both sides. I think Razor summed it up. Like, you know, we're, especially Blues fans, you know, we're really enjoying that they had a bad start to the season. But then to come out and perform like that, I thought Whitelock was outstanding. Um, I loved the duel at, at first five. I think when you play games like that, Gus, and you've played in those, everyone's got to play well, but you can still not get the result. I mean, yeah, it's tough, but the crowd there as well, and, and that's what we want, that, that it, those exciting matches come right down to the wire. And although there's some controversy, maybe a little hand there, yellow card talk, what more can you want from a, you know, what, what Lester talking about, one of the best rivalries in New Zealand rugby? A couple of moments, though, of course, the Blues with the, the disallowed tries, the ball's over the line, knocked over. The Crusaders' defence, it feels like every season we come back and talk about this and we can have a look, in fact, at some of the numbers that those guys put up this weekend from the Crusaders and how hard they are to crack. But what, I guess, the numbers won't show is the key moments. If you look at Richie Moonga, the, the tackles he actually made were try savers three or four of those mills yeah and and particularly at the back we've seen that a, a wee bit from the from the tens you know mitch hunt for the highland as well he's had to make some crucial ones because when the line breaks happen uh, and it's one on one you know using his nows to sort of try and shout the guys you know to, towards the side and what guys boys waiting for guys to get back to help those are massive in terms of moments and so when when, when teams get a moment look at that i mean and you, he's chopping big guys um, you know when they break um, when they break through, and you, you have sort of that slight sort of split second to actually make a choice in terms of how you dictate that the other person that's in space. And I, I think that's been a massive growth of Richie. You know, in the past he's probably been seen as a, as a little bit of a speed bump. You might attack him, but the way he goes about his game, obviously he's got that attacking prowess. Uh, he's a wizard on that sort of front, but he's worked so hard to put his body in, in those positions that stops tries and, and puts his team in, in a better foot. 
I just speed bump. <laughs> wow, speed bump. <laughs> Well, tackling was optional in my day, which is, I enjoyed that it was an option. You know, I used to drift often off onto the touch <laughs> judge because drifting was good, but you cannot not tackle anymore. And I think Gus is right. When you look at these players at the highest level, they're always working on something, aren't they, Mills? And I think yeah. Richie's tackles have really, really improved. The thing that's really interesting for me, both for the Blues and the Crusaders, was that both tens are dropping back into fullback. So they have to make those critical tackles. He probably missed the one on, uh, on Mark Talia, but everyone's going to miss that. I mean, he's, he's, he's going well. But also, you now need to understand angles. You, you, you defend different from first five yeah. to fullback. I mean, it means you are a fullback. And those angles are hard to organise, and yet first fives have got to learn them now. You're trying to get guys in a position where you can make a tackle, because, you know, when you're in the front line, like he's always sort of been, you're sort of well connected to some, someone on the inside or the outside. And often, and often they're sort of running straight at you. When someone breaks the line, you want to try to, to get things on your terms. You know, so when he's you know um, sliding guys to the sideline, he wants that comfort of the sideline. And then, you know, at least the, um, sorry, it was um, um, Talia or whoever it was sort of stepped inside him. He noticed that that's what he got in, got into. That's what I'm loving about it because it's so difficult to, to, to defend in the front line and then go back there and, and make those decisions, but then make a tackle. And then you have moments like that when they turn it over and you think, oh, you know. Um, you know, he's going to kick the ball out, um, he dummies and, um, and away they go. And it's just, it was just one of those games that, you know, the big time players stepped up. Every moment was sort of, you know, won and when, they, when, when a team won a moment, they made the other team pay, you know, with five points or whatever it may be and it sort of, then it, was, it became, came down to who was going to try and win it back and I think that's where, you know, the whole the spectacle of the game, you know, lit up because it was that close. Every game we go to this season is going to see, we're going to look at matchups, aren't we? And I, I hate Super Rugby being a glorified All Black trial, but this is no doubt with a World Cup coming this year. And you look at Richie Moonga, Bowden Barrett, who and how, who edged that for you, JK? Oh, I just think both played incredibly well. Mm. I thought Bowden had a good game, I thought Richie had a good game, and that's what we want to see at the All Black level. You know, I think for us, um, what you want to see is your 10 controlling the game, having a good kicking game. If you look at the stats, um, you know, pretty similar, really. Richie's wouldn't be too happy with his goal kicking. Um, you know, Bowden didn't take them last week, stepped up this week. But that's what you want to see. I couldn't really fault either of them, to be fair, and that's what you want all black year. I, the thing that the, the player that stood out for me was probably Finlay Christie inside Bowden. I thought he was everywhere last night. So there's guys that are probably on the fringe that you're starting to say, well, you know, are they stepping into that space? But, you know, the two tens were good last night. Speaking of Finlay here, I mean, what a time to be a nine. There's, there's opportunities with a few injuries going on and moving forward for the World Cup year. Finlay's been unreal. He's probably one of the best tackling nines in the game. And I suppose the growth he's had is that control, that leadership, putting, putting players in the right positions, and his work rate is honestly second to none. If you're looking, if you're from the other teams, obviously the Chiefs or whomever else, and you look at the Crusaders, we talked about a ropey start to the season, and now, you know, they come out when it really matters in front in a big game. You start to go, oh, God, here we go again. They're going to get rolling? Or is there still areas of the Crusaders game where you're like, oh, I reckon we can get them? Yeah, I mean... Don't talk it up too much because yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, well, I, I know, but, you know, there's probably... You've seen what happened, uh, you know, they've had two losses. Not what you'd usually see, and, and teams will smell a bit of blood in the water. Um, but it showed, you know, what, what the Crusaders are made of. What the Crusaders have done in the past earns that respect. And yep. every team will be going, whilst they haven't started well, they know that that's, that's a Crusader, and that comes from the history of that, 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 what they've created. They've had slow starts before, and they come like this, but you're right, there is an element there where there are... There is vulnerability, and, and the Blues has exposed some of that too last night. They should have lost. The Crusaders? Yeah, and that would have made it a really interesting <laughs> season. You know? But they didn't, and, they, and, they, and they, you know, they can go away and they can be incredibly proud of the effort, but they should have lost two tries, go begging. Um, you know, last week we spoke, last year we spoke about the final and the, and the set piece not going well for the Blues, but last night, or the night before, was about not taking your opportunities. So against any side, like... You know, you want to play the Crusaders, you want to play the Chiefs, you want to play the Blues, you've actually got to get all those things right. Don't get them right, you're going to lose. Talk about teams taking opportunities. What about players taking opportunities? Again, we're going to highlight individuals at various points throughout this season and one who will come under scrutiny at various... At, all the time is, is Roger Tuivasa-Shek, perhaps one of those guys on the fringe that JK mentioned. Millsy, what did you think of his performance oh, last night? I thought he had a solid performance. Uh, you know, a couple of times, I mean, he's... he's defensive, you know, came out of line and obviously missed a tackle. He scored a wonderful try. 
I, mean, I just think he's starting to get into a, a bit of rhythm. When he went off, I was actually quite surprised they subbed him, but Bryce Heem actually came on and he yeah, had an really outstanding good. game. So it was um, a, a nice tactical move. Yeah, look, I think um, in rugby league, not very often you jump out of line, and that's something that Roger needs to learn. So he jumped out of line defensively before and didn't make the tackle, but that's one of his learnings. And, you know, when he missed the, the tackle on Leicester, uh, that was just difficult situation. So I think he's getting better. I think he'll continue to learn. Um, is he running out of time? Well, he needs to continue to show the form and keep growing. He, I saw him on the bench last night, and I wanted to go over and give him a big hug because he just looked really disappointed in himself. But he shouldn't be. You know, you've got to be able to, you've got to, be able to jump out of line in rugby and make those tackles. He didn't make it, but it's good learning. You know, he'll learn yeah. from that.